Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how easy it is to make this little earbud holder for keeping your earphones in that you use with your phones or iPads, that kind of thing. It's a simple easy project and just takes a few scraps of fabric. Okay, so the supplies that you're going to need are two pieces of fabric. Now these measure, I'll just tell you, nine by about six but they don't need to be that big you only need to be able to cut two circles of about four inches but these these are that size so i've got an outer fabric and a plain white fabric for my inside again you can use the same fabric it's entirely up to you i just thought this might show up better on the video for you and ironed onto the back of each one of these fabrics, I've got an iron-on fabric stabiliser, or sometimes it's called stiffening. It's the type of stuff that you get from your normal haberdashery shop. I'll show you a piece here. I'm not sure how well you're going to see it. It's like a thin, meshy type thing. And on the back, you might not be able to see it, but it has got adhesive. It's not a heat and bond. It's probably the same type of thing as a heat and bond light, but it might even be lighter than heat and bond light, if that makes sense. As I say, I just buy this by the yard from the local fabric or haberdashery shop. And I've ironed that onto the back of both pieces. So the, the next thing that I'm going to do, I've got the brightness turned down on my screen so hopefully you can see this better but then I will turn it up when I come to assemble this and put it all together so we're going to go into the patterns into the basic shapes and we're going to scroll down and find a circle and we want two four inch circles so I'm going to hit the plus icon doesn't matter against either width or height I'm doing it against height to make it four and then I'm going to say here against number I'm going to hit the plus icon again to say two and set that's put two four inch circles on my mat now I'm going to go back back into the basic shapes scroll down again and I'm looking for the half circle which is this one here on the far right so again I'm going to choose that again I want this to be four inches wide the same as my circle so I'm going to hit the width and take it up to four and it's taken the height up to two for me and again I need two and I'm going to put those on the mat I actually need four of those so I'm just going to go back and I'm going to add two more so what you need you need a circle and two half circles cut in your outer fabric and you need a circle and two half circles cut in your lining. So I'm going to put these two pieces of fabric now onto this mat and cut them with the scan and cut. Now I think I'm going to try cutting them with the stiffener side down. So I'm just going to burnish them down. So I've got fabric, fabric side up and stiffener side down on the mat. That's my pattern. That's my white. I'm not sure how well you can see it. And I'm going to burnish this down now with the handle of my spatula. So if I just try and move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to go all in one direction. And once I've got it all down, I'm just going to go over it and smooth it all down both ways because we don't want any air bubbles. We want the blade to cut through this in one go. I'm not sure how well this is going to cut because I've not used this fabric stiffening with my scan and cut before. I usually use a heat and bond, either light or ultra you've probably seen me use many times but I thought I'd try this because you know sometimes this is more easily available to people than you know they can't always get heat and bond so and you need a zip which I'll come to in a minute 
So for now, I'm just going to load this into the mat. I'm going to do, I'm going to say OK and do a background scan and start the machine going. And that way I can then position the shapes onto the respective pieces of fabric. So I'm going to drag one of the circles onto the pattern fabric and the other circle down here onto the white and then I'm going to try and get hopefully the two half circles on as well. Now I can't see my white very good so I'm going to go into the settings and make it lighter and see if that shows it up any better. It doesn't really, but I can I can see hopefully roughly where it is. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go into this top icon. I'm going to zoom in and scroll down. And then hopefully I can see it better. OK, so when I'm happy with how I've got those positioned, hopefully I've got them correctly set on the fabric. I'm going to go back into the settings and I'm going to go up to my cut pressure. And I want my cut pressure set on four. And I'm going to take my blade up to... I used to use four, but I, I'm not so sure about this new blade with this machine. So I'm going to take it up to about five. So I've got my blade set on five and my cut pressure on four. But don't take my blade settings because all these blades seem to be set at different settings. So what's a five on mine could be a four on yours or it could be a six. You could end up cutting through your mat. So always do a test cut, but I'm gonna try five. And I'm gonna say, okay. And I'm gonna say, okay, and cut. And let's see what happens. So the purple fabric, I think, is thicker than my white. So I'm just going to lift this one up and just see if it has cut through. I'm not so sure whether it has. So I think I'll... Let me just try here and see. That one has, but maybe not all over. So I think I'll rub it down again. And I think I'll send it through again. And I'm just going to up the blade a little bit. So it's just over five now. This may all go horribly wrong and may not work. You never know, but we'll see. You should really cut through fabric in one cut. I wouldn't normally say to cut fabric twice, although that seems to have cut. So it might just be the paper it's not gone through, it might not have gone through the backing, but we'll try again and see what happens. As I say, it could all go horribly wrong and it could end up starting all over again.
Okay, now that, that has dragged because this has come away from the iron-on backing. So maybe this kind of iron-on backing is not a good idea for using with your scan and cut. But, you know, we'll try it and see. And this is why I would always say do a test cut. they seem to have worked perfectly so there's the backing and there's the fabric which side is which now that's the that's the fabric side, that's the backing side of the white. So that all appears to have cut well. One of these has, I think, and one is not that great. Let's just have a look. Oh, maybe it is. It's just cut. I think it's just caught in a little place there. I mean, this is going to be sewn anyway, so you're probably not going to... You're not going to see. So that's that one. I'll just try the other one. This one may not have been ironed on properly because this one seems to have come away from the backing completely. So I think what I'm going to have to do is maybe just trim this out with the scissors. I can see where it should have cut. It is, actually, it is. it has cut it's just it's catching on fibers but i'll just give it a quick trim and then what i'm going to do i'm just going to re-iron that back to this backing i don't need to but just for ease of sewing okay i'm back so there's the backing still on and I've just re-ironed this corner down just to make it a bit more secure before I start sewing. There's my circle and there's the two half circles and the circle in the white. So what you need now is a zip. Now I'm using a big zip because that's all I had to match this colour but you need a zip that's a little bit bigger than your circle. So if you're going to use a four inch circle, I would probably try and get a five inch zip. And we're going to start off. We don't need the full circles for now. We just need the half circles. So I'm going to get an outer fabric and lay it face up. I'm going to get my zip and lay it face down. So the right side of the zip down along the edge. And then I'm going to get a piece of my lining and put that right side down. So I'm looking at the fusible side and make a sandwich. You can pin this. I'm going to use some clips. And these are just those clover clips. I think I got them off the internet. So I'm lining up the, I'll show you in a minute, I'm lining up the top of the zip with the top of the fabric and putting a clip in it and then doing the same. So I've got everything lined up. So that's outer fabric right side up zip right side down and lining right side down so that's the sandwich and now i'm going to put the zipper foot on the machine and i'm just going to sew a straight line along there so i'm going to take the presser foot off my machine and put my zipper foot on most modern machines come with the zipper foot nowadays so I'm just going to put that on. You could use an ordinary foot if you haven't got one, but as I say, I think most machines these days always come with, with a zipper foot. And then I'm going to put this under the machine, 
just going to move that one down a little bit. I'm lining up this left hand edge of the foot with the teeth of the zipper and then I'm going to make sure that my needle is in the right position to sew along there. Okay, so I've set my needle for my zipper foot and I'm just going to sew a straight line. I'm just going to go backwards and forwards at the beginning and at the end. I'm going to stop the machine and remove the clips as I go. Now I've got it in place, but I'm going to keep the end one in place until I get nearer to the end. Now I can remove that one. And take it out. So that's how we're looking now. When you fold that back, you've got the two wrong sides together and your zipper in there. Don't worry about all this at the moment, it's fine. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna, I'm just gonna finger press this and we're gonna put the other side on. So again, you want outer fabric right side up. You want your zipper right side down and then your lining right side down and you're going to line up your edges again so you want to line up your zipper with your fabric and make sure that this fabric that you're sewing to now is lined up with this circle here and then take this one and place this one over the top. Now they're not going to line up here at the bottom because obviously this one's folded back out of the way. I'm just going to put a clip in and then I'll show you again in close up. trying to do this in mid-air so that you can see it and it's not it's not really working so what you've got you've got your second piece of outer fabric right side up you've got your zip right side down and then you've got your lining right side down so you've made another sandwich and all the edges are lined up here back and front and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing backwards and forwards at the beginning straight down backwards and forwards Now I'm just going to cut all the threads and then I'll show you how we're looking. So when you open this out and just finger press, you've now got your two right sides and your zip and your two wrong sides and your zip. And now I'm going to just pull these out and finger press them quite firm. I've not quite got mine lined up there, as you can see, I'm just a hair out. This should be level, but it shouldn't make that much difference. I'm going to put some clips in just to hold this in place because then now I'm going to top stitch down both sides. Get one more clip. You can see how we're looking. I've pulled it taut there and there and we're now just going to sew close to the edge of this folded fabric here on both sides just to, to sew that down and that way when you're opening and closing your zip your fabric won't get caught. 
So I'm leaving the zipper foot on for this. It's entirely up to you. You can do however you prefer. And I'm just lining the edge of the zipper foot up with this folded fabric here. And as I said, I'm just going to keep pulling it taut so that everything is out of the way. And I'm going to turn it round and do the same on the other side. So I'm going to put that thread off. So we're nearly done. I'll show you how we're looking. Take these clips off. So that's how it's looking now. Front and back. Obviously you can tidy up your, your threads a bit. You know, I'm, I'm just doing this quickly for the video. So what we're going to do now... We're going to open the zip, so open it until it's about three quarters of the way open. So this is the scrap of fabric that came off the scan and cut mat. I'm just going to cut <clears throat> a piece. It doesn't have to have the iron on backing on. If it, you know, if it'll, if it's hanging off, you can take it off, like that one is. I'm just going to cut this by eye. Let's see how big this is. <clears throat> so this is two inches by about an inch. So I'll do it here where hopefully you can see it. I'm going to fold it in half lengthways and I'm going to finger press it. Don't know if this is going to be wide enough, but we'll see. Then I'm going to fold it into the centre from the outside and finger press and fold the other one in and finger press. And then fold the whole thing together. This might be a little bit too thin, actually, but we'll see. And I'm going to try and sew down that open edge. And then cut away. So now you've got this little, I'm going to fold it in half and then you want, I'm going to put it on the bit of the zip that's cl still closed, not the open end. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. You want it with the fold side inwards and the raw edges to raw edges and you're just going to position it kind of in the middle of the zip like so and I'm just going to tack it in place tack it actually on the zip because we're going to cut that away in a bit and I'm going to sew in So basically I've just kind of basted it to the zip because we're going to cut this off in a bit and we'll have sewn inside anyway so that's going to get sewn further down. So that's how we're looking. Right, so what you're going to do now is take your lining fabric circle and place this right side down. Then 
you're going to take your outer circle and place it on top right side up so you've got right side down and right side up <clears throat> and they're together then you're going to take your outer fabric and put right side to right side like so and don't forget your zip is open now you might want to put a pin or a clip on this zip just to hold it together and then you're going to put all this together and you're going to attach it all together and either pin it or sew it, uh, pin it or clip it, whatever you want to do. So just to recap, you've got Lining fabric right side down, outer fabric right side up and they're together. Half sections with your zip right side down on top and you're going to clip that or pin it all together. And then you're going to sew all the way around. And I would sew on this top side where the zip is because you need to follow this inner edge, not the outside edge else it won't catch your stitches if you see what I mean because this is smaller now than the four inch circles because we've sewn this to the zip and it shrunk it in a bit so I'm going to put my normal foot back on my machine and I'm going to start on one of the straight sections it doesn't really matter where but just find this a little bit easier and I'm going to I'm going to move my needle over to nearer the edge it's set in the middle at the moment but I'm just going to move it over so I'm kind of sewing with about maybe a quarter of an inch just on this top and I'm going to line the right hand edge of my foot up with this top white fabric which is where I can see where the zip is as I say because the other section is is bigger and I'm just going to sew all the way around I'm going to take my time and follow it all the way around just going to do a few backwards and forwards stitches and then just follow this all the way around. Take your time. When you get to the zip, go slowly and go backwards and forwards a couple of times. Obviously this is a nylon zip so it should be okay to sew through but even so just take your time. stop and lift your presser foot up and pivot if you want to whatever you feel comfortable with I just like to put my machine on a little bit slower and then just follow the line of the fabric now I'm getting to to where it's a bit bulky now because I've got that extra hanging loop in there so I'm just going to lift it up ever so slightly take it slowly I'm going to go backwards I only basted that loop in if you remember just to the zip I'm nearly back to the where I started and then I'm just going to do a couple of back stitches and take, uh, <clears throat> take it out. I'm going to cut my thread. Now this is where you need to cut your zip. So just follow the edge of the fabric and cut the zip off. I wouldn't suggest you do this with your good scissors but these are all I've got to hand at the moment. And then again cut this one off. Now obviously this bottom layer is bigger than the top layer so I'm going to trim this down now just to match. Now you can use pinking shears if you want or you can use ordinary scissors or you could go back over and zigzag that. This is going to be on the inside so it's not really going to be seen but or you could even overlock it entirely up to you. 
think I might use pinking shears on it. So I'm just going to cut some of the bulk away without going through the stitches. Obviously you can cut closer if you want, just move all the rubbish out of the way. You could trim it down even more if you want. Now we're just going to turn it inside out through the open zip. Obviously it's only small so you just have to take your time and push it through little bit by little bit. And it will come through. And then what you want to do is, while you've got your fingers inside it, follow this seam around with your finger, pushing it all out to get it all out, to try and keep the shape. Manipulate it. Obviously, you can press it as well. Just keep sliding your fingers around. Then you've got your little loop and you've got your zip. And there's your little earbud case and then you can put a little key ring hook on there or if you've got those book rings if you've got any of these what they call book rings I've had these for years from when I used to make mini albums from scrapbooking you can get these on Amazon and eBay they literally have a little notch in them and you just pull them apart that would slide through there like that and you could hook that onto anything really a bag or anything somewhere where you can keep and that's your little earbud holder made from some scraps of fabric cut on the scan and cut machine so i hope you found that helpful please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it don't forget to subscribe and make sure that you've got the bell notification icon turned on and i'll see you in the next video thank you